With work becoming more decentralized, understanding self-managing teams has become crucial for organizations to thrive. My name is Mark, and over the past 11 years, we've been scaling our organization from 50 to 150 people, and we have done it fully self-organized. In this video, I'll tell you an honest story about self-managing organizations, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been speaking and writing a lot about self-managing organizations, and because of that, I've seen and spoken to a lot of self-managed organizations. And I feel these are the four key ingredients to make self-organization a success. The first one is that leadership has to believe in it. If they don't, it will always fail. The second thing is that you have to trust the people around you. You've got to trust their expertise. You've got to trust their experience. And you've got to believe that they have good intentions by default. It's very important that trust is given by default to everybody. It's not something you need to earn. The third important factor is that everything is open and transparent by default. There can't be any hidden information or hidden agendas or any politics. The final thing is that clarity is key. You've got to create clarity about everything. About your vision, about your strategy, about which people are present in the organization and what they are accountable for. Let's move on to the biggest mistakes and pitfalls. The thing I see happening most is that former managers stop leading. Managers are often the most experienced people in a team and they often have a lot of leadership skills. If you want teams to manage themselves, you have to transfer that information and that knowledge onto the team. And that's where you as a former manager still have to help the team out. Let's move on to the things everybody has to learn to be able to work in a self-managed organization. The first thing is that you have to learn to let go. The default answer to change should become yes. Now, it's very important. This is not about finding consensus. Not everybody has to agree on the change. It's about finding consent. The people involved should be okay with the experiment. It's a very important difference. The second thing you have to realize is that you aren't in a traffic jam. You are the traffic jam. It's the same for the organization. You aren't working in an organization. You are the organization. This also means that you can't complain about your manager anymore. If you see something you want to pick up, you have to pick it up yourself or you have to talk to your peers on how to solve the situation. You've got to start working together as adults. You get the freedom to work on the things you want to work on in the way you want to work. This also means you're responsible for that work and you take on the full accountability of that work. Now let's move on to the biggest disadvantages, the bad of self-managing organizations. In traditional organizations, managers manage people. In a self-managed organization, that is gone. There are no longer people to manage other people. But a good manager also developed the team and the people working in a team. That part is also gone. The best way to cope with this is to make feedback and self-development part of your default, part of your culture. There's one organization that did this really well and that is Netflix. They make sure that feedback is part of your work from the day you start working at Netflix. And it's a huge inspiration for us. The second thing you'll see is that you will try a lot of new stuff. And if you try new stuff you've never done before, you will make mistakes. You have to be okay with the fact that you're gonna make mistakes. And if you bring a how can I help attitude to the problem, you'll see that people learn a lot and put all their effort into fixing the issue. Another thing to take into account is that there will be a phase where making big decisions is tough for people. People have to learn that if they are accountable, they can make decisions. And people have to learn to trust each other in making those big decisions and separating the rule people hold from the soul that people have. The final thing you have to realize is that you will spend more time on communication. In traditional organizations, the board or management teams communicate one level down. So it only has to be clear for the level beneath them. In organizations without managers, everybody that is involved and touched by a decision you make has to understand the situation and the solution you brought to the table. What really helps is to communicate the journey that you took while you're on that journey. Don't just communicate the end result. But it's very hard to strike a balance between communicating enough and over communication. 
So if the amount of issues you have to navigate is so long, what are the benefits of working in a self-managing organization? The first one is very hard to explain. It feels more natural for both colleagues working together as equals, but also for me as a founder to work together as equals with my peers. You will also feel this in the area of trust. It feels far more natural to trust people by default. And it feels very good to be trusted by default. You will also see that people that are accountable for their work thrive in their work and they maximize their own potential, but also add more to the organization because of it. Because people work on the stuff they find relevant, they are far more engaged, but also far more effective. And yes, you will spend more time on communication, but once the strategy is clear and once the direction is clear, all energy will flow towards that direction, making you a very effective organization. The most important thing I hear from former colleagues is that the rate of change is far higher. Because people run more experiments and try more, you'll learn faster and thus change faster. So I can imagine you're now at the should I implement this in my organization stage or you have a lot of objections. This will never work for my organization. Objections I often hear is that my organization is far smaller or far bigger than yours. I work with a team that's very smart or my team isn't smart enough. The type of work doesn't fit self-management. And the final one I often hear, it's going to be very hard to make the transition from a traditional organization to a self-managed organization. And I'll be very honest, that transition will be very hard. You will spend a lot of time on yourself and on the own organization to make this work. But it's not that your people can't. That's simply not the case. Most of the people you work with will have made big life decisions which they never studied for or which they never done before. Like for example, buying a house, taking a huge financial risk or raising kids, taking a huge personal responsibility. Nobody studied for that and nobody learned how to be great at it. But still people are very successful in doing both. The people you work with did however spend years studying for the work that they do or they have built up years of experience. So why wouldn't you be able to trust them to make big financial decisions and to take on huge responsibilities if they can do it in their personal lives as well? The question shouldn't be, can this system work? The question should be, can we make the transition into such a system? And the honest answer is that is a very personal decision to make. You have to believe that systems like these are possible. If you don't, it will always fail. You have to be able to believe in the people you work with to make this a success. Voice has been a very successful organization while being a self-managed organization. But that shouldn't be the reason you do it. Business success shouldn't be your incentive. What will work for every organization is trust good intentions by default. Being open and transparent about the things you're doing in your organization and creating clarity for everybody that works in the organization. These things are universally applicable. And all of those things will build a healthier and more effective organization. There's a lot more to tell you about the subject of self-management and that's why we've written a book about it. That book isn't available in English, however, but we are working on a translation. To give you a feel, these are some of the things that people have said about the book. This is the most complete resource on self-management I've read to date. Calling this the handbook for working together as equals is an understatement. And this book is in the top three of most important books on self-organizations. The translation of the book will be available for free and will translate it chapter by chapter. And if you want to read those chapters, as soon as they're translated, you can sign up for the newsletter and I'll send them to you each month. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give it some love and I would love to see you in the next one. Cheers.